Good evening and welcome to the 2024 Goldsmith Craftsmanship and Design Council Awards. As your hosts, we're thrilled to be back for another year to present and what a wonderful lineup we have for you this evening. Before we begin to officially open tonight's awards ceremony, we would like to welcome to the stage the chair of the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council, Anne-Marie Reeves. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council, affectionately known as GCDC, I wish to thank you all for coming and joining us on this very special awards evening. We're delighted to welcome so many here in the Goldsmiths Hall and honoured to be joined by the Prime Warden, Charles Mackworth Young, Joanna Hardy, our Trade Warden, and hopefully Annie Warburton, the um, Clark and CEO of the Goldsmiths Company, as well as all our patrons, sponsors and distinguished guests. But that's not all. We're actually live streaming our evening. So welcome to everybody, wherever you may be in the world joining us. And not forget those who are watching us live streamed at the Lord Raglan pub round the corner. <laughs> we'll see you all there later. The Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council was founded 116 years ago with the following remit, to encourage, stimulate and promote the pursuit of excellence in craftsmanship, design amongst all those in the United Kingdom who work within silversmithing, goldsmithing, jewellery and allied crafts. This core principle remains at the heart of the organisation today and the boundaries always pushing them in design, craft and technology. But these awards would not be possible without the generous and unwavering support of our patrons and sponsors. Notably our founding patron, the Goldsmiths Company and long-standing patron, Katia. For this continued support, we sincerely thank you all. The relationship with all our patrons and sponsors has continued to strengthen and adapt to changing times. Many of you now are offering additional encouragement to your winners, such as an educational experience, working alongside a master craftsman, or special partnerships and opportunities that will benefit the skills of any worthy winner. This year, we're delighted that we received a record number of entries for the competition. Almost 800 individual entrants, translating into 1,600 category entries. But without the support of our wonderful judges, this competition wouldn't have the credibility or the integrity that it actually deserves and attracts. The judges were often amazed and enthralled by the quality and complexity of some of the work always considered with a critical eye. They're tasked with protecting our high benchmark standards, which are never compromised. So thank you to all 120 judges, many of whom are with us tonight. The GCDC Special Awards meeting to decide the Premier Awards is always a highlight. This is when Council awards the highest accolades for the competition. Each worthy submission is scrutinised and discussed until a unanimous decision is concluded. And I can assure you there are a few friendly battles along the way. These awards will be revealed at the end of the evening. After the presentation, there will be the opportunity to view the award-winning work in the drawing room and in the exhibition rooms, to meet the winners, patrons, sponsors, judges, and to celebrate this year's competition. The exhibition actually remains here for the rest of the week, so we really encourage everybody to invite family, friends, work colleagues to come along and have a look. The highlights for this year include a programme of events, both with the Birmingham Assay Office in March and the Goldsmith Centre in July. And other events in the pipeline include Goldsmiths North and the Jewellery Show. The awards annual will be printed and available in April, 
So we still have lots of things to come. So let's get our awards underway. I'd like to introduce our two main presenters for this evening returning again, Judith Lockwood and Maeve Gillies, and both our fellow council trustees. And I now hand over to them to get our awards evening underway. Thank you. So before we kick off the proceedings, we would kindly ask that all award winners remain seated. We ask that the gold award winners and those who have won the top sponsored awards come to the stage when your names are announced to have your award presented to you. All silver and bronze award winners will have the opportunity to collect their certificates from the luncheon room and to have their photograph taken on the stage at the end of the ceremony. Rest assured, we will let you know if you're to come up on stage to collect your certificate. Now, let's get to the bit you're all waiting for. To present the awards and accolades this evening, we warmly welcome the Goldsmiths Company Trade Warden to the stage, Joanna Hardy. As is customary, we start the ceremony with the 2D Design Awards. There were 10 design briefs this year, which covered a wide range of specialisms, from silversmithing and metal design, to platinum jewellery and artificial intelligence. So we'll start the awards with conceptual jewellery design. This year, entrants were invited to delve into the mysterious, mythical and medicinal realm of the fungi kingdom to design jewellery or body adornment. Remember. Bronze and silver awards, please stay in your seats. This year we start with three bronze awards that go to Sarah Pei Manpour, Tyler Stottard Asher, and Stasia Parker. And two silver awards to Amy Thorne Clark and Naomi Large. And finally, our first gold award for the evening goes to Jing Chen Yung for the Portable Fungus Farm. Jing Chen, please make your way to the stage to collect your certificate. Well done. Next up, we have 2D medal design category. The art medal is a medium for expressing two contrasting ideas in one artwork, also engaging with its edge to create a complete narrative. This year, entrants were invited to design an art medal on the theme of boundaries, frontiers, thresholds, gates, fences, and barriers, Maeve. And this year, we had four bronze awards going to Sally Costin, Charlotte Garnet, Ruo Chong Cheng, and Abigail Burt. And we had two silver awards going to Friday Lawrence and Xiong Du Tsao. And finally, a gold award for the Step Fortuna Domus Medal by Juan Castro Varon. Juan, please come to the stage to collect your certificate. Congratulations. Now, we come to a new section in our 2D categories, AI computer-generated design. Using any combination of AI design tools, such as text-to-image, AI search, conversation tools, and generative AI, entrants were challenged to design and depict how we will be wearing, using, and creating objects in the future. We had an astounding four bronze awards for this section, which went to Connor Mayer, Sarah Payman poor Nicola Marguay and Kyle Ferguson.
And finally, there were two silver awards, which went to Anna Thompson for the Sixth Sense Body Adornment and Zizi Huang for Holographic. Moving next on to silversmith's design, entrants were asked to design silverware based on the theme of shadows, reflections, and illusions. This year, we have one bronze award that goes to Adrian Ward. And now, moving on to the 2D design for 3D printing, this year sponsored by special patron Alpha Laser. 3D printing and selective laser melting are relatively new additive manufacturing techniques. This category aims to encourage and celebrate creative work that has been designed and crafted to take advantage of the design possibilities specifically offered by 3D metal printing. So we would like to welcome Lucas Reichel of Alpha Laser to the stage to present the award. For the 3D printing brief, we had two bronze awards, which went to Cynthia Yang and Simon Evans. And we had two golds for this section this year. The first gold goes to Neil Raymond for the beginning collection, and the second gold on the Alpha Laser Award goes to Chantel James for Alchemist. Neil and Chantel, come on up to collect your awards. Next, we have Small Workers Design, sponsored by, by our patron, Champagne Gosset, who have generously supplied the champagne that has been flowing earlier this evening. This year, Champagne Gosset asked entrants to design a gosset-inspired lapel pin and a presentation box for gifting to gosset ambassadors or friends of the house. This year, we have two bronze awards going to Claire Maiden and Daniel Rushby. And the silver goes to Sophie Martin Glinell for the Torbion lapel pin and presentation box. And now on to repurposed jewellery, sponsored by our brilliant named award patrons, Viper Designs. Entrants were asked to design jewellery as a graduation gift for a music student with a passion for 80s music, using the material reclaimed from family jewels. So we'd like to warmly welcome Ben Crump of Viper Designs to the stage to present the top award. For repurposed jewellery, there were two bronze awards, going to Arthur Howard and Tina Blad Bieg. There were two silver awards, which went to Lily Canham and Claire Maiden. And impressively, we have two gold awards this year for the repurposed jewellery section. The first gold goes to Tina Blad Bieg for the graphic equaliser bracelet. And the second gold and the Viper Designs Award goes to Luke Orford for the 80s inspired brooch. Tina and Luke, if you'd like to come up. Congratulations. So, our named award patron, the Goldsmiths Company, Assey Office, have partnered with the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council on the Make Your Mark Award. This year, entrants were asked to design 
any product or jewel that interprets and celebrates the spirit of a city. So we'd like to welcome Will Evans, director of the Goldsmiths Company Assey office to the stage to present the top award. Come on up, Will. This year we have two silver awards. The first silver goes to Bing Yan Chu for marking Beijing. And the second silver and the Goldsmiths Company Assi Office Award goes to Francis Lay for City Spirit Belfast. Francis, are you there? Come on up to the stage. And next, in the 2D sections, we are thrilled to welcome named award patrons, the Platinum Guild International, for the Platinum Jewelry Design Award. For the design brief, entrants were challenged to design platinum rings for everyday wear on the theme of Romantic Rebel. So there were two bronze awards, which go to Shang Li and Mandy Morris. There was a silver award which went to Rachel Chaw Wai Chung. And to wrap up the Platinum Jewelry section with a bang, the Platinum Guild International Award at silver level goes to James Powell for Mon Chevalier. James, come on up. Nice trousers. <laughs> and that closes the two design awards for now. We're going to be returning to announce the winners for the Peridot Jewelry and 2D hand rendering design later this evening. A huge congratulations all the, to all the 2D award winners so far. You will be able to view all the winning designs in the drawing room later tonight after the, after the ceremony. So we now move on to the 3D finished works. Entries in the 3D design sections are primarily judged on artistry and design merit, but consideration is also given to the quality of craftsmanship. Let's start with Silversmith's design. Sponsored by special patrons Lindstrom, who return to support design excellence with their named award for another year. This year, there were two bronzes awarded to Alice Fry and Sheng Zhang. And there were two silver awards, which went to Shinta Nakajima and Sheng Zhang. And finally, this year, the Gold and Lindstrom Award for Silversmithing Design goes to Alavain Shingerland for the Obelisk of Chaos. <laughs> Avalain, congratulations, come on up. Well done. And we now move on to the enameling design section. This design-led section encourages enamelers to explore and experiment with glass enamel to achieve visual effects of a decorative or contemporary nature. This year, we had a brilliant array of three bronze awards, which went to Blythe Jolly Ellis, Jan Jan, and Chow Yu Li. And there were an amazing two silver awards given this year. The first silver award goes to Jan Jan for the silver enameled egg brooch. A round of applause for Jan Jan. <laughs> and unusually, the second silver has been awarded to a piece that has taken seven years to compete, complete in a planned partnership with master enameler Fred Rich and is awarded posthumously 
to Phil Barnes for the Dancing Leaves Vase. A round of applause for this inspiring partnership. And now for the Phil Barnes enamelling bursary. Phil, as many of you know, will know, was a lifetime entrant to the competition. And during his long and illustrious career, he encouraged the high standards of traditional enamelling skills and techniques. The Phil Barnes enamelling bursary was therefore established in memory of master enameler Phil Barnes by his wife, Linda. We would like to very warmly invite Linda Barnes to the stage, please, to present this bursary award. And we are thrilled to announce that this year's bursary has been awarded to Caitlin Murphy for Spiral. <laughs> Come on, Caitlin. <laughs> Wonderful. And we now move on to the conceptual jewellery section. This section champions designs of conceptual, artistic, or one-off items of jewellery or body adornment that have a compelling concept behind them. So entries can include any combination of materials, non-precious or precious, and were judged on the creative concept, design, innovation, and originality. This year we have a fantastic three bronze awards going to Si Son Yong, Dai Yi Kim, and Zi Zia Hua. Well done. And there were also three silvers awarded to Anna Gordon, Alice Biolo, and Mark Hampson. As a testament to the brilliant work in this year's conceptual jewellery section, we have two gold awards going to Sahara Abru Rane for Aurora and Xu Yu Huang for Invasion. Sahara and Xu Yu, please come to the stage. Congratulations. So moving on to Ready to Wear Jewellery. Thank you. Sponsored by Named Award Patrons, the National Association of Jewellers and the British Allied Trades Federation. So this Ready to Wear section invites jewellery that is demi-fine, contemporary, easily reproduced and commercial. Entries can be made using precious and non-precious materials and were judged on their design merit, commercial viability and market suitability. So we would like to invite Heather Calloway, Chair of the NEJ, to the stage to present the top award. There were two bronze awards which went to Shirani Fernando and Shi Lin Hu. And this year we had two silver awards. The first silver goes to Augusta Lazenby. And the National Association of Jewellers and the British Allied Trades Federation Award at silver level goes to Jo Boteng for Fitter. Congra congratulations, Jo. Please come up and get your award. Great. So we're excited to be partnering again with Thomas Light for the Precious Jewellery Design section as named award patrons. 
So precious jewellery is made from metals like gold, platinum, palladium and silver, and typically incorporates gemstones, enamel or other decorative features. And we'd like to invite to the stage Nick Farrow from Thomas Light to present the top award. There were an incredible five bronze awards given this year. Congratulations to Premyslav Beres, Charlotte Garnett, and Joanna Stroinska, Hanje Kong, and Hoi Min Jang. So continuing with the brilliance in this section, there were three silver awards. A big congratulations to Janet Barber, Pearl Ng, and Amy Gibson. And finally, the Thomas Light Award for Precious Jewellery Design at Gold Level goes to Martina Grummet for Firewalk, Firework Sautoir. I've been trying that all day. Firework Sautoir. Come up, Martina. Next up, fine commercial jewellery, and we are delighted to be partnering with special patrons Beaver Brooks once again. Entrants were invited to submit jewellery or accessories suitable as a gift for any occasion. Pieces were to be made in precious metals in any combination and incorporating gemstones where appropriate. Please may we invite Lorna Haddon from Beaver Brooks to the stage to present the top award. This year, there were two bronze awards, which went to Balint Samad and Bola Lyon. There were two silver awards for Sarah Straussberg and Yu Ching Wu. And finally, we move on to the gold award. So the Gold and Beaver Brooks Award for Fine Commercial Jewellery Design goes to Yu Ching Wu for the Crack Modelling White Crystal Necklace. Come on up. Well done. Well done. And for the final 3D design section, we come to small workers design. Small work covers the production and manufacture of small scale items made in precious or non-precious metals, such as boxes, scent bottles, accessories, objets d'art, and timepieces. This year we have one bronze awarded to Rebecca Oldfield. And there were two silvers awarded, which went to Louise Parry and Marky DeBard. And finally, we have one gold award in this section. A big congratulations to Dong Ding for Boundary of Balance Rings. Dong, please come to the stage and get your award. Well done. Well done. What a brilliant array of awards so far, I think you'll agree. 2024 has been a blockbuster year with a record number of entries. So you should all be very, very pleased with yourselves for being here tonight. We hope that everyone who is watching on YouTube, around the world and in the country, or at the Lord Raglan, we'll see you later, are enjoying the celebrations as well. And we're only halfway through, so buckle up as we have more awards to give out. So next, 
we move on to the 3D craft sections. In the following sections, entries are judged mainly on technical and craft skills, with originality, creativity, and presentation weighing in. In the craft categories, entries are split into juniors and seniors. Again, just a quick reminder to all of our bronze and silver award winners to please stay in your seats. We know it's exciting, but stay put. We will let you know if you're about to come up on stage because we will call out your name to come and get your certificates. So named award patrons, Cooks and Precious Metals, return for the 2024 competition with the modelers section. So modeling is the art of sculpting objects from a variety of materials. Any sculpted object, including medals, could be submitted in any medium and can be created using hand or technological techniques. We would therefore like to warmly welcome Mark Adams from Cooks and Precious Medals to the stage to present the top award in this section. Let's kick off with the juniors first. We have one bronze award which goes to Sam Lack for the Shaman's Guide. And moving on to the seniors, we have two bronze awards going to Hamid Arab Chubdar and Sarah Davis. There were three silver awards, which went to Anne-Marie Walters, Ian Rank Broadley, and Erica Sharp. So the modeler's senior section rounds off with two golds this year, including the Cooks and Precious Metals Award. So to kick off, the first gold award goes to Anne-Marie Walters for the Vinoc, and the Cooks and Precious Metals Award for Modellers at Gold Level goes to Richard Chown for Benin Mask. Anne-Marie and Richard, please come up to collect your awards. Congratulations. So, we are delighted to be partnering with named award patron CW Sellers again to promote the art of lapidary and gemstone carving. So the brief encouraged entrants to submit lapidary in their chosen gem material. Any style of cutting, carving and finishing could be used, including precious or non-precious gem material. So please, can we invite Rebecca Sellers to the stage to present the top award in this section. This year in the juniors, we have one silver award, which goes to Yanmin Zhao. Moving on to the senior section, we have one bronze award that goes to Emily Bailey. There was one silver senior award for Francesca Marcinaro. And finally, again, an incredible two golds in the senior lapidary and carving section, including the top award. So we kick off with the first gold award, which goes to Pershemislav Beres for the Big Five. Thank you. And finally, gold and the CW Sellers Award for Lapidary and Carving goes to Vicky Forrester for Dyad in Agate and Gold. Come on up, Pershemislav and Vicky. Congratulations.
Next up, we are excited to welcome Grant McDonald Silversmiths as named award patrons to the Silversmiths Craft, to the Silversmiths craft section. This section welcomes larger scaled work and functional or decorative objects. For the top award in this section, we would like to invite Grant McDonald to the stage to present the top award, please. So this time we commence with the seniors, where we had four bronze awards. These went to Rani Higson, Alice Fry, Ryan McLean, and Wayne Meaton. Keeping up with the bronzes, we also had four silver awards. This year for the seniors, congratulations to Jenny Edge, Benjamin Ryan, and two silver awards for Sheng Zhang. Next, on to the juniors, who did not disappoint. We begin with three bronze awards, going to Wojciech Linda Apanowicz, Paul Bailey Green, and Daniel Bollard. There were two silver awards, which went to Alavain Schlingerland and Shinta Nakajima. And finally, the Juniors Gold and the Grant McDonald Silversmiths Award goes to Caitlin Murphy for Convex Cube. Come on up again, Caitlin. <laughs> Wonderful. Next, we are delighted to be partnering with Ottawa's silversmiths and jewellers. Small work can include an intricate mechanism, hidden features, or a highly decorative surface. A reminder that this section is predominantly appraising the craftsmanship. So we'd like to welcome to the stage Andy Putland of Ottawa Silversmiths to present the top award. Come on up, Andy. And we begin with the seniors, where there were three bronzes awarded to Marco Paunessa, Kevin Williams, and Marco DeWard. <laughs> Moving on to the juniors, we begin with one bronze award, which goes to Idris Tetlow. There were two silver awards, which went to Paul Bailey Green and Dong Ding. And finally, the Ottawa Silversmiths and Jewellers Award at gold level goes to Sophie Chapman for their model of a Nissan Figaro. Come on up, Sophie. Now on to the Chasers section, sponsored by named award patrons, the Birmingham Assay Office. To present the top award for the Chasers section, we are very pleased to invite Roxanne Guest, Deputy CAO of the Birmingham Assay Office, to the stage. So we begin with the senior Chasers. There was a bronze award going to Katie Watson, and two bronze awards going to Wayne Meaton. We have one silver award, which is going to Alice Fry. And one gold in the Chasers senior section awarded to Miriam Hanid for the Threads of Time centerpiece. Come on up, Miriam. Well done, congratulations. <laughs> 
And now for the junior chasers. Three bronze awards going to Idris Tetlow, Joshua Huck, and Jonathan Stokes. And there was one silver awarded to Daniel Bollard. <laughs> Lastly, the Birmingham Assay Office Award for Chasers at Gold Level goes, goes to Charlie Lewis for the Grape and Vine Cup. Are you there, Charlie? <laughs> So whilst we're with the Chasers, this year one of the winners in this section was also awarded the Special Council Bursary. This bursary is designed to support craftspeople in providing some workshop experience with an established expert. This year we're pleased to announce that the Special Council Bursary goes to Katie Watson for the Spring Hair Dish. Katie, come on up to collect your award. <laughs> Well done. It's a long walk from the back, isn't it? <laughs> you made it. Well done. And next up, we have the engravers, die sinkers, and seal engravers section. We commence, commence with the junior awards, where we have two bronze awards, which go to Caius Berda and Louis Fain. And the juniors take home three silver awards, which go to Jonathan Stokes, Isabel Freeman, and another for Caius Bearder. Next up, there was one gold in the juniors section, and that went to Celeste, Celeste Heathcote for Ish Wish Dish. Well done, Celeste. Great name, Ish Wish Dish. Now, on to the seniors. So we start with one bronze awarded to Christian Lima. <laughs> and finally, a gold award in the senior engravers. Congratulations to Louise Sorrell for the Shakespeare Folio 400 Years Celebration Salva. Louise. Would you like to come forward and get your award, please? Excellent. It's nice to hear the cheers. So we've now come to the enamelers and enamel painters section, where we'll start with the juniors. There were two bronze awards for Jan Jan and Xiu Yu Li. For the juniors, there were two silver awards, which went to Liu Yi Fein and Hanji Kong. Now onto the senior enamelers. We begin with four bronze awards going to Yinglong Li, Sarah Hemmings Varda, Kerry Lawrence, and Setsu Waters. We have three silver awards for our senior enamelers. The first silver goes to Fred Rich, and we have two silvers for Linda Connolly. Thank you. And finally, the gold award for the enamel and enamel painters goes to Penny Davis for a series of enamel portraits. Huge congratulations, Penny. Come on up.
As we move on to the Setters Craft section, we warmly welcome named award patron Louisa Guinness Gallery to the competition for the inaugural Creative Setting Award. We will begin with the Setters Craft Awards and would like to welcome Louisa Guinness to the stage to present this top award, please. So for the senior setters, this year we have two bronze awards for Joanna Strowinska and Thomas Carl Johnson. And a silver award which goes to Antonio Bonamo for Steel Pocket Knife. In the junior section, this year we had three bronze awards. The first bronze goes to Arthur Howard, and there were two bronze awards for Yu Cheng U. Incredibly, there were three gold awards this year for the junior setters. We're excited to announce that these go to Ruben Vale Pauli for inverted pyramid set ring, Sophie Mackenrig for Celestial Solace and Alicia Strong for Opal Pendant. Would you all like to come up and get your goals? Reuben, Sophie and Alicia. Fantastic, well done, well done. And finally, we are excited to present the new Creative Setting Award. Louisa, who champions craft skills, design, and new inventive ways of setting, is sponsoring this prize specifically for work that has demonstrated creative setting in their entry to show gemstones in their very best light. So the Louisa Guinness Creative Setting Award goes to Yu Cheng U for the Three Diamonds Full Bezel Setting Ring. Come on up, Yu Cheng. Following beautifully on from the setters, we move on to the diamond mounters. This section predominantly focuses on the framework that gems are set in. Pieces should be unset and unpolished where possible for judges to best assess the quality of the mount. There was one bronze this year for the senior diamond mounters, and this goes to Jude Young. And a silver award at senior level, which was given to Thomas Carl Johnson for the Orchid Necklace. Moving on to the Junior Diamond Mounters, we begin with two bronze awards. These have been awarded to Daniel James and Esther Elet. And there was one silver which was awarded to another entry from Daniel James. And to finish off this section, we have two gold awards. These have been awarded to Martina Grummet for Firework Sautois. Got it. And Joshua Huck for Dagger Drop Earrings. Martina and Joshua, please come up to collect your gold certificates. Congratulations. So next up, we have the Polishers. And in the seniors, there were two bronze awards, which go to Marco Paunessa and Carson Ekanyake. And for the junior Polishers, we had one winner for two separate entries. 
Congratulations to Paul Bailey Green, who won a bronze award for Hearts Over Diamonds and a gold award for Night and Day. Paul, I think you're there. Would you like to come up and collect your gold award? So the jewellers section, sponsored by principal patron Brown & Neworth, is designed to identify and reward high quality skills demonstrated in fine jewellery. We would like to warmly welcome Lindsay Mitchell of Brown & Neworth to the stage to present the top award for this category. We start with the senior awards. We are pleased to say that this year there were three bronze awards which went to Amanda Lee Hope, Marco Paunessa, and Anna Gordon. For the senior jewellers, there were two silver awards. Congratulations to Leo de Vrooman and Thomas Carl Johnson. Moving on to the juniors, where there were two gold awards this year. The first gold was awarded to Martina Grummet for Firework, Firework Sautois. And finally, the Brown and Neweth Award for Jewellers Craft at Gold Level goes to Amy Gibson for the Hummingbird Collar Necklace. Come on up. Well done. Well done. Wonderful. Now, we're on to the final five sections before we hit the major and premier awards. So the following five sections are judged on both the quality of craftsmanship and creative design, style and visual impact. So for the horn and polymers section, we're delighted to continue partnering with the worshipful company of horners who sponsor this patron named award. Entrants were invited to design and make any jewellery item or product taking innovative approaches that incorporate and embody horn or plastics as a decorative and complementary feature. So we would like to welcome Michael O'Brien of the Worshipful Company of Horners to the stage to present the top award. We begin with two bronze awards, which go to Sarah Louise Macquarie, and Cha Min Goose. There was a silver award for Dai Ya Kim. And there were two gold awards this year. The first gold award went to Heather Coleman for Horn Pendant, and the Worshipful Company of Horners Award at Gold Level goes to Janet Richardson, for winged, silver and horn necklace. Janet and Heather, please come to the stage. We now move on to the fine jewellery sponsored by named award patron Boodles. This award seeks to identify and reward elegantly designed and beautifully made fine jewellery. Entries had to be made in platinum or gold in any fineness, colour and combination. This year we had one bronze award which went to Prapasri Su Wanakot. And a silver award, which goes to Janet Weller for Harmony. <laughs> now, 
Next up, we move on to Wire Innovation, sponsored by named award patrons, the worshipful company of gold and silver wire drawers. We would like to invite Catherine Carr, master of the wire drawers, to the stage to present their two awards. So to begin, we have one bronze award, which goes to Megan Brown. And then we have two silver awards, which go to Amanda Lee Hope and Isabella Bedlington. And incredibly, this year, both the gold awards were won by the same entrant for two separate entries. So congratulations to Anna Gordon for the fragmented memory and shared memory three brooches. Come on up, Anna. The Laser Technology section is sponsored by Special Award Patrons Alpha Laser. We would like to invite Lucas Reichel of Alpha Laser to the stage to present this next award. So this year we have four bronze awards. Congratulations to Alice Biolo, Benjamin Ryan, Propastri Sue Wanakot, and Paul Bailey Green. And to wrap up the laser section this year, we have two silver awards, one of which wins the Alpha Laser Award. The first silver award goes to Marco Paunessa for the VRI-D medal, and the second silver, which was awarded the Alpha Laser Award for Laser Technology, goes to Paul Bailey Green for Night and Day. If you'd like to both come up, please. Excellent. And finally, to wrap up the last 3D section of the competition, this year we are delighted to welcome the Cloth Workers Company as principal patrons. So the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council have partnered with the Cloth Workers for a new silversmithing section designed to promote and support the core craft skills of young silversmiths that incorporate references or a connection to textiles. So to present the top award for this section, we would like to invite Jessica Collins of the Cloth Workers Company to the stage. So we begin the awards for this new section with three bronzes, which went to Sheng Zhang, Jonathan Stokes, and Daniel Bollard. And we're also delighted to announce that Sheng Zhang won the silver award for another entry, the Trio Jug and Double Skinned Beaker. And finally, the Cloth Workers Company Award for Handcrafted Silverware at Gold Level goes to Caitlin Murphy for Convex Cube. Congratulations, Caitlin. So as we near the pinnacle of this evening's festivities, we'd like to warmly congratulate all of our winners so far. So we begin with the special awards before we announce the major and premier awards. Firstly, we'll commence with the Creative Innovation Award. And for this, we welcome back Western Beemore and Domino to this category, where entries that demonstrate innovation in creative design or manufacture are recognized. Judges recommended entries for this section and to present the top award, we'd like to welcome Andrew Morton from Western Beemore and Domino to the stage. Come on up, Andrew.
We begin with two bronze awards, which went to Si Son Yong and Vicky Forrester. And finally, the Western Beamore and Domino Award for Creative Innovation goes to Alice Fry for the Geode Celebration Box. Come on up, Alice. Now we move on to the Gem A Award sponsored by the Gemological Association of Great Britain. The winners will be awarded an online Gem A Gemology Foundation course or an online Gem A Diamond Diploma. This was open to all entries that included gemstones in their submission. Entrants submitted a statement on how the course could benefit them. We'd like to invite Alan Hart of Gem A to the stage to present these awards. So, Gem A, we're so impressed with the entrance that they're offering an additional online course to the two runners-up, Mia Vilsins and Liu Yang. And the winner... The winner of the Gem A Award is Vicky Forrester for Dyad. Congratulations to you, Vicky. Please make your way to the stage to collect your certificate. So following two highly successful design briefs focusing on the beauty of the Peridot gemstone, we're thrilled to be partnering again with Fully Gemstones as principal patron. And we'd like to invite Pia Tona of Fully Gemstones to the stage to present the top award. So this year's theme celebrates Chinese New Year with 2024 being the year of the dragon. Entrants were asked to design neckwear using only peridot gemstones in their submissions. We begin with the bronze awards, where this year we had four bronze winners. Kathleen O'Connor, Hannah Jackson, and two bronzes for Mandy Morris. <laughs> Next, there was one silver awarded to Colleen Asade. And finally, the Fooley Gemstones Award for Peridot Jewellery Design at Gold Level goes to Sophie Cudworth for Year of the Dragon Necklace. Sophie, come to the stage. Congratulations. Amazing. So we're delighted to be partnering with Sheffield Assey Office as special patrons for the 2D Hand Rendering Award in celebration of their 250th anniversary. So this rewards outstanding skill, presentation and professionalism in the use of traditional hand rendering techniques. So to present this award, please welcome Emma Paragreen from the Sheffield Assey Office to the stage. We had five contenders for this award, and we will announce the winner in a moment. The five contenders were Sophie Cudworth, Giselle Moore, Stasia Parker, Mandy Morris, and Tina Blad Bieg. And the Sheffield Assey Office Award for 2D hand rendering goes to Stasia Parker for her high fay earrings. <laughs> and unfortunately, Stasia couldn't attend, but she has requested Apple Nottenboom to please collect the certificate on her behalf. Apple, come on up, thank you.
Thank you, Apple. Next up is the Podolsky Award, and we would like to invite Jennifer Bloy to the stage to present this award. This generous legacy was established by the late eminent jeweler Paul Podolsky. This award supports potential in silversmithing, jewellery, or the allied trades, and it's given to a young designer or craftsperson up to the age of 30. We had a fantastic six contenders this year. Alavane Schlingerland, Celeste Heathcote, Ruben Vale Poli, Charlie Lewis, Sophie Chapman, and Hangji Kong. It is with great pleasure that we can reveal that the 2024 Podolsky Award goes to Sophie Chapman for their model of Nissan Figaro. Well done, Sophie. So the Theo Fennell Apprentice and Master Award is designed to celebrate the unique partnership between the craft skills of an apprentice and their master, promoting high quality apprentice work and recognizing the significant contribution of their skilled master. So we're delighted that Theo Fennell continues as named award patron and we would like to invite workshop manager Ian Baker to the stage to present this next award. We are thrilled to reveal that there were six contenders for this highly prestigious award. Sophie Chapman, Ruben Vale Pauli, Charlie Lewis, Alicia Strong, Martina Grummet, and Celeste Heathcote. And the winner of the 2024 Theo Fennell Apprentice and Master Award is Apprentice Charlie Lewis for the Grape and Vine Cup and Master Stuart Ray and Chris Hurley. Charlie, Stuart and Chris, please come up together. Now we're absolutely delighted to see grandfather Chris and grandson working together. Congratulations. Very nice. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Well, everyone, we now come to the pinnacle of the competition, our major and premier awards, which are the highest accolades afforded by the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council. We start with the college trophy. We'd like to welcome back the Betts Group as special patrons, this prize is based on a point scoring system calculated on the number and level of awards each student has received in the competition. Please join us in welcoming Charlie Betts to the stage to present the winner of the college trophy. So we start with a third place college who will receive 100 grams of again silver for the course to use on a student project and tool vouchers to the value of £100. We're excited to announce that in third place we have the Royal College of Art. The second place college will receive 250 grams of again silver plus tool vouchers to the value of £250, and this goes to Bishopland Educational Trust. Big congratulations to Bishopsland and the RCA. And now for the winner of the 2024 College Trophy, who will win 20 grams of single mine origin gold, 500 grams of again silver, and tool vouchers to the value of £500. 
And we're thrilled to announce that this year, the Betts Metals College Trophy goes to Birmingham City University. And congratulations. And well done to all the BCU students who entered and went on to win the prize, because this trophy is down to everybody's collective efforts. And this is Lee Lapthorne. Thank you for coming up, Lee, head of college on the stage. Thank you, Lee. Congratulations, Birmingham. We now move on to the Junior Award, and we're very excited to welcome Tracer as new principal patrons. We'd like to invite Jason McIntosh, the Chief Operating Officer of Tracer, to the stage to present the Junior Award. From all the incredible gold award winning work presented to Council, the Junior Award is given for a piece or a range of work that is judged to have achieved the highest standard of craftsmanship or design. Our contenders this year are Ruben Vale Pauli, Sophie Chapman, and Charlie Lewis. The winning entry for the Junior Award was highly complimented by judges as innovative, breathtaking, and a very high gold. And we are thrilled to announce the winner of the Junior Award 2024 goes to Ruben Vale Pauli for inverted pyramid set ring. Come on up, Ruben. Well done, well done. Following the excellent results from the juniors, we come to the Senior Award. This section follows the same criteria as the juniors, and we had four contenders for this award. They were Anna Gordon, Penny Davis, Anne-Marie Walters, and Alice Fry. The winning entry was praised by judges as absolutely stunning and regarded as extremely difficult to do. The winner of the 2024 Senior Award goes to Penny Davis for a series of enamel portraits. And now we come to the penultimate award, starting with the Goldsmith Company Award. This award is given for exceptional and outstanding design. It is only awarded when an entry achieves the very high standard of design and originality. This year, council members agreed that there were no entries that met these very strict criteria. So we're now at that point of the ceremony where we come to the highest prize and greatest acclaim in the Goldsmiths competition. The Jacques Cartier Memorial Award, which is only given at the discretion of the council for outstanding and exceptional craftsmanship on an extraordinary piece of work. We would invite Laurent Finois of Cartier to the stage to present the Cartier Award and to say a few words. Good evening. I'm going to be very short, but I'm extremely humbled and I feel extremely privileged to be with you today. Uh, as you know, the Jacques Cartier Awards was created in 1958, so 66 years ago, so way, way before many of you, many of us at Cartier were in the trade. And uh, this is a superb occasion to be with you uh, at uh, this incredible place to celebrate it. And I'm very, very delighted because, as you said, this is not an award which goes uh, and which is awarded every year. And I think today it will um, be awarded to someone very, very special. So I'm extremely, extremely pleased. Thank you. And thank you for the organization, which is always perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Something. 
It is with pleasure that we can announce that the 2024 Jacques Cartier Memorial Award goes to Penny Davis for her series of four enamel portraits. Our judges did remark that Penny's work represents some of the finest painted enamel portraits that they have seen in over 30 years. And it's absolutely remarkable to see the artistry that goes across these four individual pieces of which you'll have a chance to see later. Huge congratulations, Penny, and is your heart still racing, love? <laughs> uh, thank you for coming up. And now, finally, we come to the Lifetime Achievement Award sponsored by Thomas Fatterini. And for this award, we would like to welcome Tim Fatterini to the stage. So the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council gives a Lifetime Achievement Award medal in recognition of a recipient's outstanding contribution and commitment to silversmithing, jewellery and the Allied Crafts. All candidates for this award were nominated by our trade and the council had a wonderful selection of worthy people to choose from. This year, we are delighted to reveal that the council has chosen to bestow its Lifetime Achievement Award on Tony Bedford. For many in this room, it's an absolute pleasure for everyone to hear that Tony Bedford has won this and to celebrate this remarkable career of this incredible man in the world of silversmithing. Tony's journey as a master silversmith began at a young age. He was fueled by an unwavering passion for his craft. Tony's early years commenced with a pre-apprenticeship course in silversmithing where he recognized his true calling. Under the mentorship of Masters George Oliver and Lou Marlowe at Naylor Brothers, Tony honed his skills and fondly recalls that he loved every minute of it. His career continued with positions at Stuart Devlin, Grant MacDonald and Michael Driver, eventually leading him back to Naylor Brothers, later acquired by Garrard. Here, Tony climbed the professional ladder to take on the post of general manager at Garrard. The merger of Garrard with Asprey in 1998 saw Tony steer the ship to oversee the development of their product lines and commercial business. It marked a pivotal chapter in the Asprey and Garrard era. Tony's artistic expertise and commitment to craft have earned him widespread acclaim. He won his first Cartier Award at the age of 32 for the chaste Madonna in copper. Astonishingly, Four decades later, in 2019, he won his second Cartier Award for the chaste head inspired by Rodin's Burgers of Calais. Beyond his personal achievements, Tony has been a stalwart supporter of this industry. His extensive teaching and advisory roles, including serving as a member and chairman of our Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council, have solidified his status as a pillar of the silversmithing community. Tony was unable to attend this evening, and thank you for collecting that promise. However, he has sent us a message. Being creative is one of the greatest gifts that you can ever have. To actually start the day with nothing and at the end of the day, you can see what you've made. It's amazing. I started off at 
17 as a silversmith. The artistic director at Goldsmiths Hall said the sky was the limit and my career has progressed 46 years through working at the bench to managing a business, eventually moving into retail. I've been retired for 14 years and I've still done some work and some teaching. Silver is such a wonderful material to be able to craft in. It's such a privilege to be able to use such a beautiful metal and um, I'm continuing to use it and always will while I'm able. If you're starting out afresh these days, you've got to soak up all the information that you possibly can. I would encourage young people to knock on people's doors if they can't get anywhere because I'm sure there are a lot of craftsmen, craftswomen in the same position as me that are willing to pass on their skills before it's too late. You'll be surprised how willingly people will give their help to you. I've been aware of Craft and Design Council since I was an apprentice. Every opportunity I had, I entered into that competition. I later became a member of the committee and I was chair for a year. I'm involved in judging now. It is a really important part of the industry and many of the entrants would be doing what I've done with the piece you can see here, in that they want to show off their skills. I suppose I'm trying to prove to myself I've still got what it takes. The competition showcases high quality skill and artistry. It's quite meaningful to be part of it, but particularly as a judge, um, any, anything to help. This is for me. Yeah. Well, it's so beautifully made. What a, what a wonderful thing to have won, to be given such a prestigious award. This is quite overwhelming, really. It's still quite an emotional occasion to actually hold this thing and realise the implications of what this is. I mean, that's amazing to be recognised by your peers for your career's work. Thank you for the the people who nominated me in, in the trade. And thank you for honouring me in, in, in such a way. It's, uh, it's something I will treasure always. I'm very grateful for it, so thank you. Let's celebrate this contribution and achievements of Tony Bedford, a master silversmith whose passion, talent and generosity have contributed so much to the craft of silversmithing, leaving an enduring impact on the generations that follow. Thank you. And uh, again, just to thank David Court for coming on stage to uh, safely deliver Tony's medal to him. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. And now, to wrap up the celebrations this evening, we'd like to invite Trade Warden Joanna Hardy to say a few words. Well done to you both. Good evening to the best silversmiths, goldsmiths and craftspeople in the land, distinguished guests and fellow colleagues. It has been another successful event celebrating the very best of craftsmanship and creative design in the United Kingdom. Just going to the drawing room and seeing the array of fantastic craftsmanship made me feel so proud, so very well done. Having been on various judging panels over the years, competitions can be a logistical nightmare. But Brian Hill and his team go to great lengths to make sure the GCDC awards run smoothly, efficiently, and most importantly, is judged fairly and correctly according to the 33 dedicated competition sections, differing briefs, and other awards. This year, I was invited to be an observer at the judging of the Council's Special Awards meeting, which included the College Trophy results and its Major and Premier Awards, the Junior and Senior Awards, and the two Premier 
awards the Goldsmiths Company and the Jack Cartier Awards, both of which are only awarded when Council's challenging criteria have been met. The judging panel for these prestigious awards are members of the Council, and in the past, the judging would have been exclusively undertaken by skilled and experienced craftspeople. As the Council continues to broaden its activities, outreach and effectiveness in support of an ever-changing industry, the Council members now consist of 22 people with a greater range of expertise and backgrounds, so that there is a stronger diversity and relevance of skills judging these prestigious awards, while still maintaining the core experienced craftspeople. And so I went along to the Goldsmith Centre to listen in to what was to be a fascinating afternoon. All 2D and 3D gold-winning work from all the categories were laid out, and what a spectacle that was. The Council were all armed with their blue latex gloves, and the master craftsmen with their head magnifiers all leaning over the tables, inspecting and scrutinising each and every piece. For each of the categories, there was a process of elimination, which in the initial stages was quite unanimous. But when the discussions were getting more into the minute detail of why a piece should be considered for an award, then the debates started to get really interesting. Members as chairs of previous section judging panels would give feedback to the council as to why the piece had won gold in their category. Then the crafts masters would give their feedback until finally there would be another vote as to if the piece should be included or excluded and so forth, until there was a united decision. It was interesting to hear how the detailed debates could sometimes alter people's initial discussions and decisions. One thing was for sure, no one was shy of speaking up against or for a piece, and I must admit, I found it quite hard not to put my own pennies worth in. As Council continues to maintain its high benchmark standards across all its competition judging sessions, members were unable to find a design-led entry that met the criteria of the Goldsmiths Company Award for the third consecutive year. And so, Council will be reviewing this prestigious award for next year's competition. But you, can you please, our wonderful entrant community, rise to the challenge and continue to submit entries that will hopefully satisfy Council's brief for this great award that simply looks for design originality next year. As we have seen, the Jack Cartier Award, which is in its 66th year history, does not get won every year. And out of the 42 times it has been won, only five of those have been won by jewellers. And so it was reassuring to witness the level of scrutiny each piece received before decisions were made and awards being granted. To all winners this evening, you should all feel very proud of yourselves, knowing your pieces have impressed some of the best experts in our industry. I look forward to seeing more design and creativity and fine craftsmanship in 2025. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanna. Before we say goodnight, we would just like to invite Anne-Marie, Chair of the Goldsmiths Craft and Design Council, to close tonight's ceremony. Anne-Marie. Well, thank you, Joanna, for your kind and inspirational words, and I'm so delighted that you enjoyed being with us on our special awards meeting. <laughs> We really appreciate your time in a very, very busy diary that we know that you have, but we also know how much you enjoy seeing the new work of talented young designers. There are a few people tonight as we conclude our evening that I would like to thank. Uh, firstly, to Maeve and Judith, who did an amazing job keeping us on track. <laughs> okay. 
and handling all those tongue twisters of names that we gave them to practice for hours, I can promise you that much. Uh, to the staff of the Goldsmiths Company, without who this evening wouldn't be possible. And to our brilliant film crew who've live streamed this evening celebrations to audiences all over the world. So wherever you are, thank you very much for watching and joining us too. But a really big thank you must go to our consultants, led by Brian, Benita and Alex. And this year we also have um, Lida, Lois and Sarah that joined the team. The dedication that you've all showed is absolutely phenomenal and that goes above and beyond the whole remit of what you have to do for us. And I know it takes a lot more time and energy to get these awards organized, the competition running, the exhibitions that follow. It doesn't just end up with one, one evening. It's a whole year's worth of effort and work. And without you, this really wouldn't happen. So I think could we give them a round of applause as well? <laughs> And finally, thank you all. Thank you all for joining us at the Goldsmiths Hall tonight. And I'm sure you're very excited to go now and to see the pieces that you've seen on screen in reality and, uh, and the celebrations can begin. So congratulate all our winners and thank you for participating in this wonderful, unique competition. And so now to what happens next. In a moment, we will ask all the silver and bronze award winners to remain in your seats. We will then tell you how to collect your certificates and give you the opportunity to come and have your photograph taken. Everyone else can then make their way through the door at the back into the drawing room and exhibition room and enjoy having a look around and, uh, and a glass of wine too. So to conclude the proceedings, it's both a privilege and an honour standing here tonight as chair of GCDC, as part of this amazing industry. For those who are starting on that journey, be inspired by those who have gone before and set the high standards that we all aspire to. For those stars of the future, the world is your oyster. This officially completes our formal proceedings for this evening. So may I ask the guests please to start to make your way through the back of the room and the silver and bronze award winners to remain here. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs>